بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد الحمد لله we're just near the finish line the 29th chapter سورة العنكبوت 69 verses and its name العنكبوت that is the female the feminine version for spider the male is عنكبون عنكبون and we're told that the plural takes on two forms. One is anakibu wa anakibu. Either way, we're talking here about the spider. Why is it that Allah Ta'ala has named this chapter Al-Ankabut? We're told because of the Darbul Mathali bil Ankabut. Because Allah Rabbul Alameen strikes a parable, a story, gives an example using the spider. And because of the uniqueness of that, Allah Jalla wa'ala has this chapter as a whole being named after it. We don't know of any other names for this chapter besides this. And its general principle and objective is Bayanu Wahani Kulli Ma Yu'badu Min Duni Lahi Ta'ala Wa Butlani Fikrihi Wa Aqidati. That Allah Ta'ala in this chapter is demonstrating the weakness of anything and everything else that is worshipped in addition to or besides Allah Rabbul Alameen as well as the falsehood, the falsity of the beliefs as well as the creed or ideology that there is that is the foundation for people's beliefs, pardon me, for people's worship of whatever else it is that is besides Allah Rabbul Alameen or in addition to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So idolatry and polytheism as a whole that Allah Rabbul Alameen dismantles those arguments and he shows that they are false and they are weak. The reason for its revelation, so it is a Meccan chapter, and although we don't have anything telling us about the chapter as a whole, there is that which is there for certain verses from within the chapter. And as far as the virtues of it, the only virtues we have is that it is from the chapters that are less than 100 verses, and therefore it is oft repeated. The relationship between the beginning and the end. We're told, الْحَدِيثُ عَنْ مُجَاهَدَةِ nafs. So the whole focus is this aspect of jihad nafs of struggling against oneself. So this aspect of, <coughs> excuse me, the inward struggle, the inward focus to discipline oneself, to subdue oneself such that we can have that self to be restrained so that as a whole, Whatever it does, it does because it is something that Allah Rabbul Alameen allows and that He loves. And that whatever Allah Ta'ala does not allow, He does not love that we subdue it, that we restrain it such that we abstain from it. And in doing so, that aspect of constantly being vigilant with regards to ourselves and making sure that we're on the straight and narrow of Allah Ta'ala's path of righteousness, that's what the whole focus is. <coughs> فقال سبحانه وتعالى في في فاتحتها ومن جاهد فإنما يجاهد لنفسه and whoever strives earnestly then indeed they do so for their own benefit and he says concluding the chapter والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا and those who earnestly strive in our cause or in our way seeking to please us then we will certainly guide them to our paths that bring us to us. Allah is basically making it clear that those who are sincere because of Allah striving to discipline themselves and restrain themselves and maintain themselves, that Allah Ta'ala will open up all the different pathways by which they're able to do that so that Allah Ta'ala in wanting this objective to be there, He also provides the strategies and the tactics and the blessings of success. But what about the relationship of this chapter with the spider before it. <coughs> We're told, لَمَّا خَطْمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْقَصَصَ بِالْأَمْرِ بِتَوْحِيدِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى قَائِلًا وَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاهًا آخر. <coughs> Excuse me. That Allah Rabbu Al-Alameen concluded Surah Al-Qasas with the command to Tawheed, to monotheism. Saying, and do not call upon anyone else with Allah. And do not call upon any other gods or deities that you have concocted, that you believe in, any other idols. 
do not commit any form of polytheism and idolatry with Allahu Rabbul Alameen. And this is true of angels, of prophets and messengers, and especially anyone or anything else. We are not allowed to make dua to anyone other than Allah and only Allah. And this has to be clear. And Allahu Rabbul Alameen then, نَاسَبَ ذَلِكَ إِفْتِتَاحَ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ بِقَوْلِهِ أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَيْ يُتْرَكُوا أَيْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ that we see the, the, the appropriateness of starting this chapter where Allah Ta'ala says, do the people think that they will be left to just say that they believe and they will not be tested? So in being tested, is the person going to be calling to Allah and only Allah? Or are they going to resort to different things of polytheism and idolatry? Is it that they're going to, in being desperate and being frightened and, and who knows, whatever it may be, that they're going to call upon angels to, to guard them and to protect them? Or are they going to call upon the Prophet Muhammad wasallam to intercede and who knows what and so on and so forth? Or are they going to call upon some wali from Allah Ta'ala's saints and say, you know, you're close and dear to Allah Rabbul Alameen, you go ahead and, and, and ask Allah and so on and so forth. The believer irrespective of whatever they're going through, they're always going to call upon Allah. But the more severe the circumstance, that all the more fervent they are and sincere they are in their calling to Allah Rabbul Alameen and strictly and solely deferring everything to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us such that regardless of our circumstances that we never believe in, that we never supplicate to, that we never call upon, and that we never worship anyone or anything other than Him, and that we die in that state of Tawheed, so that He Jalla wa'ala will always be pleased with us, and in doing so, that we will never have anything to fear, nor to regret, or to be saddened about, and that we'll never have anything of suffering that we'll also have to face. Allahumma Rabbana Ameen, wa sallillahumma wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.